tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer animation. Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, what is a canyon? A canyon in Spanish canyon, archaic English, British English canyon <laughs> or gorge, is a deep cleft between escarpments or cliffs resulting from weathering and the erosive activity of a river over geologic time scales. The most prominent one, of course, is the Grand Canyon in Arizona, and uh, you have lots of uh, canyons in Mexico, in China, etc. Typical canyon is this here, for example, that's Brazil. And you see we have uh, the cliff and it goes deep down. And we're going to model something like that using Autodesk Maya. By the way, if you find this article interesting or something is missing, uh, just go to that article in your language. For example, Nether Netherlands or Polski, Portuguese or whatever, Chinese, Port, um, Hindi, Korean, and change that article accordingly. For example, the Korean Wikipedia article is very thin, only a couple of sentences. You could uh, easily enlarge this uh, rather than having four or three or four pictures only. Create text here and it's free to edit and uh, the universe of Wikipedia is made by people like us, you and me. We are not experts, maybe, but we know something about it. And I know how to model a canyon, at least, basically. This is Maya, and I want to apologize for not using polygons today. I'm a NURBS fan, as many of you maybe know. This is the polygon world, but I would rather start modeling a canyon with a few intelligently chosen or drawn curves. And this is the tool to do this. And uh, it gives me that cross here. And once I click, I will uh, place that curve in space. I click once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. And then I press enter and then I have a curve in space. That's the basic starting point of a well, a surface, really, because when I draw two curves and I kind of connect them and then I have a nicely modeled surface. Uh, this is going to be the left side or the right side of my sort of surrounding area. And um, I want this cross to sit in the middle of our curve. That's why I go to modify and I center the pivot. It's not crucial, but I like to have it uh, there. And then I uh, control D, duplicate this curve, and I move it a little bit further to the left. And I leave it just as it is. I just don't modify it. It's, it's just sitting there. Then I duplicate it again, control D, and I move it a little bit further here. And then we sl slowly want to go down. This is uh, going to be the cliff. Duplicate it again, and now the trick is to approach the rim slowly with more curves because we need a sharp edge here. Duplicate it again. You see here in the outliner we have curves 1 to 5 now. Very simple process really. So I'm getting really close here as you can see. And I duplicate it again. And I move it a little bit down like this and maybe a little bit forward like this. So this is my starting point of the cliff and now it goes deep down and of course I duplicate it again all the way down here and this is sort of in the middle of the canyon cliff height and then I go down where the river flows and I duplicate it again and I go yet another just a little piece down duplicate it again over here 
I'm using this dense population of curves here because uh, we have sort of sharp edges. We expect short, uh, sort of sharp edges here. Whereas now I duplicate it again, of course. I can move here. That's the riverbed, so to say. And maybe here. And now I need to go up and I prepare this by planting more curves quite densely here. I'll go slightly up here. And we can make the 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 left side slightly less steep than the other one and duplicate it again that's why i move the curve over here now duplicate it again and move it up here i duplicate it again because now i want to approach that cliff again duplicate it again and now we're free to move over here so this slowly fades out now this is my selection of curves I could have actually started with the river down there, with the riverbed, uh, and then started with the outer curves here, etc. But uh, this is the most elegant way to create a basic NURBS surface, because the loft needs a special selection of the curve. That means this one, that one, that, 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 etc. And I can pick them here in the outline in exactly that pattern. So this is the last one. And um, now I go to this tool here. This is the loft. If you don't find it here, go to modeling and then to surfaces. And the top entry is the loft. It looks black and gray underneath. And that's why I go to surfaces and I reverse the direction of the surface. So this is basically my canyon. And you see that the edges work out quite nicely. They're exaggerated a little bit right here and there. And the interesting thing about NURBS modeling now is that uh, we can actually modify the curves after having created that surface. I'll give you an example. If you want to make a mountain here, we just raise this, move it over here, and now press F8 to get to the component mode, and I lift these CVs here, and then I get this kind of mountain flow. I can, and actually I want to do that, uh, change the size of the river. And uh, for that purpose, I select this part here and deselect the surface because I only want to pick the curves. And I don't want to pick this one, so I deselect it, only the, the curves down there. And now I scale them down so they get more flat. And I press F8, see the components, and I scale those down so they get closer to each other. And I widen those. And since the riverbed is not absolutely flat as it is right here, I move these down, these even more down, and I select the front ones even more down there, and I can give them an edge here or a curve sort of and of course I can create a curve in the middle by doing this now I go back to the shaded mode object mode first and then this so I modified my canyon so it's uh, it's quite different now from what it was before because I modified those curves here they're not totally flat on the on the ground anymore of course, you can now go into other details. What you don't want to do is modify the surface as such. You can rely on the curves only. So right mouse click and don't modify the, the surface. You might wonder, can I turn this into a polygon? Of course you can. Uh, you just select the surface and you go to modify and convert and convert NURBS to polygons. And in our case, because we don't see triangles, we see quads basically, we go to the option box and we select the quads. The default is triangles, but we rather pick quads here. We apply this and close it. And uh, now we can hide the curves and the NURBS surface. And this looks basically the same but it's 
a polygon surface. So you can export this to a computer game, for example. It's much too complex, probably, because uh, we need, for, for such a geometry, we don't need that many faces. But that's uh, another thing, and that has to do with polygon modeling. One thing which is important for a canyon like this uh, is the dimensions. And for that reason, I will import a human a character, basically. And I find this under Windows, General Editors, and the Content Browser. And in the Content Browser, I have People. And, for example, I can pick him. I don't need a skeleton or anything. And I pick her. Now I have two people in the scene. And, of course, I need to scale them down massively. They have many, many polygons, as you can see. So scale them down. They're extremely complex, really. Now I can use the key F to focus on them. As you can see now, it's a, like a working desk. But of course, we want to have the dimensions of a canyon. So she's up there and he's down there. And that's the perspective of a canyon, I guess. And down there, he's standing and looking at his smartphone or whatever, or trying to discuss something with somebody who's not there. So he's sort of standing in the river. Focus on him. Get close to him through this wall here. And try to find her. And obviously we don't find her because she's not close enough to the rim. So we need to place her close enough to the rim. And since, since we have this shot here, we go to view and create a camera from that view. So we can always come back to that camera. It's called perspective one. So that's the camera here. And when I press and hold the space bar, I get the hot box. And in the panels, I can choose the perspective window, which is now the same as before. But um, I can move around freely and I can move her further to the front and then in this window for example I choose the perspective one and now I can move her up there you see there she comes if you want to render this in this case I would typically introduce a physical sky and just render the scene So this looks pretty dark, and it is pretty dark down there. If you want to change this, choose your sky dome light, and here you have the tab physical sky. And in the physical sky, you can change the elevation and the azimuth. And uh, that's basically changing the position of the sun. And finally, I show you an animation which I rendered using the graphics card with uh, low anti-alias settings, where I just planted paint effects plants, two types of plants, randomly, on my canyon. And it looks quite amazing how the camera moves up and inspects the whole scene from above at the end of this brief animation.
Thank you.